So welcome to the episode 38 of uh, Double Cross Anime. This is in in out in my time a day before Christmas. Uh, it's two days so, before Christmas, right? For you? Uh, so the Christmas Eve gonna be tomorrow night. Right. On the twenty fourth. So, yep. All right. Well, so, merry uh, Merry Christmas <laughs> to you, Mario, and to everyone listening. All right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's. I think. I think we're gonna put this out like on the Christmas, uh, event. So yeah, Merry Christmas to you guys. This week we got into the final episodes of Gripman, of Chan Robo. The episode before the last of Banigo Senpai, which is episode 12, and volume 5 of Flower of Evils. We don't have uh, any run of the winds until like the, uh, I think the 9th or 10th yeah. of January. Yep. So, yep. So, uh, Whooper, which show you want to go first? Man, I don't know. Uh, do you want to just do Bunny Girl? Or we did that first yep. last time, right? Well, I guess we I can think do we it again. Just, yeah, I think we do Bunny Girl, and then we will say the all these final episodes for on for the shows. Sure. Which, it, yep. All right, we can do that. This this might end up being the last time that we talk about Bunny Girl, despite the fact that it has one episode to go, because we have a bunch of other stuff planned for the next few weeks. That's right. That's right. So. Talking about this act, the uh, the little sister act, I actually pref- prefer this episode more than the last one. Why is that? I like it more because I, I think I, I think it's interesting that uh um that that his sister have like the uh um different uh, personalities. So so she basically is, she not forget everything, but she basically have another personalities. Uh, yeah, kind of, um, like her, she has a, kind of a different, um, demeanor and voice that are attached to the different parts of her based on which set of memory she has. Cause you can, at the, right. at the very end when she gets her, when she kind of returns to her old self, she, mm-hmm. she stops using the really cutesy grating, uh, emoto voice and has a more reasonable, like human tone. <laughs> To her speech yeah so that that made right. that the best part of the entire episode is when she finally stopped using the screechy <laughs> like pay attention to me yeah. oni chan uh but, manner of talking but i i i, I think uh, when we know the context of her you know forget uh have a, of her lo- losing her memories so uh, we, we can see why she get attached to to her brothers so like she basically forget everyone, even to to her parents and and the and the brothers, and only only him, the main characters, the the one that everyone clinging to, um, see hers as you know as the new. Uh, the new person. So I, I I think that's actually a valid you know, um, decision for her you know to. It, to lean on her, to lean on the guide. Yeah, I think so too. I I think it makes sense. It kind of, in a, in a way, it sort of justifies like the the attachment that she has to him, the kind of the crush that she has on him, um, mm-hmm. because at the at the outset of her new her kind of new life, because um, mm-hmm. she loses all her memories, he would seem like less of a less of a brother, I suppose, and just more of a boy. Um, so mm-hmm. that it it kind of makes sense that she would get so attached to him, even in like a somewhat romantic manner. Uh, right. <laughs> I I wouldn't dis- disagree about the uh, romantic manners. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, but yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's still strange and it's still tropey. Um, yeah, it but is, it is. It does it it does kind of gel with what we learned about her character this week and what had already been alluded to in previous episodes, I suppose. And in this episode, she actually, you know, like hang, like tried to, to go outside, try try to go to school and finish many of her objective. So they went to the zoo. They they said actually went to the school. They have ice cream, I think, as as pudding. one of the objective pudding. Right. <laughs> yeah, she gets everything so, kind of checked off in her in her journal that you were complaining about last week. Yep. <laughs> 
So at least that done. <laughs> yeah, that's out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. Is there uh, any any reason why you think that she changed to her previous personality uh, at the end of the episodes? Yeah, I think so. And I mean, it's a stupid reason, but I think the idea is that she's quote unquote cured um, as a result of like you know, not not as a result of physically checking and circling everything in her in her journal, but she's kind of reached a point where she feels satisfied with the progress that she's made, uh, and so mm-hmm. now whatever. Uh, grasp like adolescent syndrome had on her is yep. uh, is kind of broken and so now she's returned to her former self so is it now that the uh, new mission of Sakuta is to uh, get her having a new memories like like embracing the uh, two personality together um, well we didn't we kind of already have a yeah uh, an arc Maybe where there were two halves of a person who he had to like Futaba. combine. Yeah, and at the end of that right. one, didn't the two halves of her like didn't the two Futabas become one again? Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So I'm not really sure how they're gonna roll this uh, with this. I mean, honestly, my hope is that she like it's it's clear that she is is back to her old self or whatever, and she has lost those memories that she had during the during the time where her life was kind of dominated by her fear of the outside world. So I, yep. I would just prefer for the last episode to be uh, dedicated to her, like getting to know her brother again and like slowly learning about what happened to her and, and, and making, yeah, making new memories and like meeting new people, all the new people that Sakuta has introduced her oh, to yeah. getting like reacquainted maybe, with them. And right. I think there. maybe she, she so have to meet up with her old friends from from the middle school. Oh yeah, that one girl. Get I can't remember her name as well. I don't remember her name either. The one from the beach scene at the at the end of the previous episode. Yeah. What was in re- refresh my memory? What was in the note? Um, did we see what was in the note that was no, left we, in, we, in that book? No, we we haven't had a chance to see that actually. Really? I because I I, I don't recall. What was in the note? No, I I really. Oh no, I remember now. It said I want to be friends with. Uh, oh yeah, Kai, yeah, sorry, Kai yeah. Chan. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. I was trying to. I was trying to think. Um, I was trying to remember whether it had some like, I don't know, really important and impactful phrase that would have kind of brought Kai Day out Trigger. of her. Yeah, that would have yeah. triggered the return to her previous personality. But uh, I think that happened fairly early on in the episode, and it kind of motivated her to go outside and like tr- start make her way towards the school and eventually you know she took that zoo my favorite part of the episode was the zoo trip hmm. just i liked seeing the animals <laughs> all right <laughs> because when when animal movement is badly animated it doesn't feel as jarring as when human movement is badly animated to me i well well i i, I do miss a giraffe from from review starlight oh of course i mean <laughs> bunny girls giraffe cannot compare to review Starlight's giraffe. There's just no, there's, it's no contest. Yeah. Well, I hope with this new personality though, um, Kade gonna be, you know, more, she, 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 she not that, she, 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 she not going to get worse. That's what I hope for. What do you mean worse? I mean, like last episode was the worst. Like, like, like how she just clinging to her brother's make every plan regarding to her brothers yeah well i I think that's probably over right because hopefully because i don't know she's back to her former self yeah and i don't know her former self well how 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 is she gonna behave well probably not the way she was before where she was like trying to cuddle under the covers with him and and stuff are you Uh, sure about that well when he when he goes into her room she she acts like very you know, she <laughs> she wakes up to the to the presence of her like her beloved older brother or whatever, and she just acts pretty calm and uh, she doesn't she doesn't freak out about it or anything. She's just like, oh, uh, hey, oh, that's you. Is it you? Is that you? Yep. Is this my room? Was my room always like this? She just is like slowly coming to grips with her surroundings. She's not like, oh, Nichen, I I want to snuggle. Oh. Uh. <laughs> 
I, I I'm not sure about that yet. So we we will have the last episode to say it. Yeah. Well, I mean, what are what are you? My my wish is for her to just like slowly get used to life. Yeah. With with a with a a section a section of her memories missing, you know, like and to be oh. to get acquainted with everybody again and to like meet up her, with her old friends and start going back to school. How would you, would what is your like dream ending? I guess. All right, my dream ending would be yes, yeah, she, she, uh, she will reverse her memory of you know of the of the new first of the new people that she met during these two three years. She will come. She will have to come to a uh, grief of her back memory of her uh, trauma, so to so to speak. And yes, yeah, she 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 have to become off at like a an an a. Uh, full grow characters that's what i hope for i wonder so not, if she, i wonder if she still has the same fear of phones and like girls her age if deep, I think if deep I, down she might still have that same fear even though she's kind of reverted to her previous self that's right i think she does i think she still does hmm. so that would mean in essence that she has to make the exact same like amount of progress all over again no, no, I, I, I just think like she will be really alarmed whenever the uh, the phone rings, just like the the old the the old caddy. Yeah. But she, she, she won't be like losing memories or you know fainted fainted or anything. She just be really alarmed. That's what I did. That's what I think right now. Too. I I think there's a decent chance that she that that won't be the case. I I think it would be interesting if like that that fear like the there was so much mental damage so much scarring that it persists even underneath the personality reset or memory reset yep but i kind of feel as though they'll it'll be like two really distinct uh halves of her i yeah. I, I don't know we'll we'll have to see i guess well the i think the only thing that uh is still consistent is that the uh, uh the adolescent syndrome playing up so that like her body getting you know, like bruises, sick of bruises. So I, I think like whenever she receive receiving a call, even like if she, she, she not overreact o- over that, she will got like oh no bruises again. Wait, are you saying that she had bruises even at the very end? Um, not not that, but I, but I, I, I think it's gonna be it's it might be the case in the future. Yeah, maybe. I, I guess we just don't know for sure how mm-hmm. how much of the old Kaida is in there versus how much of the the newer version that we're more familiar with. Right. And one more thing I, I want to get into is uh, now we, we have more of the insight into um, Sakuta and Kaida's parents. So like how, how they cope with the uh, with all the Kaida issues. And, you know, like actually they, they are presents. We saw a bit of that um, in in previous episodes as well, P- particularly yeah. like I don't know, ten or eleven, something like that. Mm-hmm. We saw yeah, him we, we, eating at a family restaurant with his dad, not just this time, but like before that as well. Yep, yep. And we knew that his uh, his mom kind of went insane or <laughs> whatever yep. whatever it is that went on with her after Kaide experienced like the mental break. Yep. But I guess we maybe this might be the first time that we saw his mom. That's is the first time that we saw his mom. Yeah. Not not in real life, though, just from the flashback. Right, right. So, uh... yep. <laughs> Do you have anything else to talk about these shows? Uh, yeah. I just I just want to say, Mario, that some people are yep. tall and some people are short. And right. we're, we're all different. So it's fine if you can't go to school and all you do at first is go to the nurse's office. Oh, and yes. The reason that's, that's right. okay that's right. <laughs> is because some people are tall and some people are short. Some people are athletic and some people are, are unathletic. <laughs> yep. So, so it's, it's okay just to... <laughs> yep. I... That makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> like, what does going at your own pace have to do with people's physical abilities and appearances that's not hello well also work, what was it's... go ahead it, it's it's work for her you know like she, she totally bought it oh yeah i mean that's true and i 
but I think that the the counselor was doing a spectacular. Uh, she was. It was a huge reach. Like she was really bullshitting at the end. And, but Kaide is just so dumb <laughs> that she was like, "Oh, that that makes sense. I'm gonna go to the nurse's office and get uh, checked off on my attendance." Checked there. off. Yeah, so, so that's that all her plan. Oh, why well, just go to the nurse office to, in order to check off? The also, list. what was the bit about never showing your little sister like your poop and your pee? What what was that? Do you remember all this? Right. No, I don't. It's uh at when he's talking to the blonde girl right after um, Mai yeah, yeah. has has left to go on her mm -hmm. uh, like she's going for two weeks or something to yep shoot a TV show or a commercial. Who knows? Mm -hmm. um and then he's like there are, there are a bunch of things you never want your little sister to see like your poop and your pee and uh and when you're afraid what what all oh, right yeah it sometimes the dialogue in the series just makes me want to curl up into a ball and die <laughs> all right you i i don't even want to show that to my partner or my wife or like whoever you know whoever it is beside myself what you mean like watching the series no 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 poop and pee oh <laughs> okay yeah uh i guess i agree um but why bring it up I in conversation know. with the the stepsister or the half sister of your girlfriend like what that is all right whatever yeah that i i i i guess i i guess i know what they mean that that they what they try to do they try to um they, they try to say that you <laughs> They try to say that you know there there's something that you you are not supposed to tell everything up to your to your little sisters because especially your weak size because they gonna uh you 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 are basically a shoulder for them to cry on but i I don't even know why he had to reference on the poop and pee I don't know it's yeah. probably some fetish thing gotta sell those blu rays. Yeah, yeah. You gotta get yeah, the yeah. You gotta get the word poop in there. <laughs> yeah, I I have right. no idea, dude. <laughs> it just it's maybe, so oh bad. My, um, oh maybe that's just there in a, in order to become a meme in the future. <laughs> maybe, I don't maybe. know. Maybe <laughs> they're uh, they're aware of the meme potential. Yeah. So they yeah. <laughs> they just decide they hoped someone would screen cap it and it would go viral. Oh my God, that's uh, that makes as much sense as any other explanation. <laughs> All right, we can move on to this hell, man. All right. Well, I I hope it has a you know like a nice final episode. I guess. Yep. I I hope so too. <laughs> but I I I I must say that I enjoyed this ep episode much more than the last one. So that's it's it's it can improve, you know. Yeah, I guess it was it was okay. It held my attention, and yes. uh, it's it's nice that Kaide got to go to the zoo. I'm happy that she got to see the pandas that's Yay. a nice nice moment for her and i hope she has a she has a she has a nice life hope she oh. gets all fixed up gets a band-aid on Ta her brain talking about panda you know you know you remember resuko in aggressive resuko yeah are you talking about the the holiday special that just came out no no I, i'm talking about like what you know what kind of animals he is um, that's a good question. I actually don't know off the top of my head. I don't remember. Um, All right. She's a she's yeah. a tanuki or a raccoon. Maybe? Nah, she she actually a panda, a red panda, I think. Oh, she's so she's a lesser panda. The lesser than panda. That's right. That's right. Yep. You know that show actually did get a Christmas special. Yeah, I know. I know that. I'm I'm like, I'm not sure if ago. I'm gonna watch that. I watched it. Oh yeah, is that yeah. is that good? Is that like? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's uh, but it you know it, if it, it's the sort of thing that you should watch if you like the show. All right, I like the show. I like the show well enough. Yeah, then I I would watch it. I right. it's it's no masterpiece or anything. I you don't have to rush, but it was pretty good. And there's there is a OVR for the uh, for Stand Get Zero as well. So for Wonderful. listeners, <laughs> for listener and whooper, if you like to watch it, go ahead and watch it. I haven't watched it that yet though uh, it's maybe it the out? new ending yeah it just come out with the blu-ray i guess me. yeah yeah that's is right. it like a is it like a like a new conclusion or a is it part I of the have, story or is it just like them on a beach somewhere i have absolutely no idea they they say that this is the episode 24 
Oh, which that is, is which is the basically the last episode. But I I'm not sure what the content is. If it's referred to as episode 24, then it's probably important to the story. Probably. Even if it's like uh, some alternate universe or something, it's it's probably pretty significant. Maybe. <laughs> You'll just have to watch I, it and find out. Well, I, I, I don't really care about the that sequel, though. I, th- I, 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 I hold the belief that the uh, this sequel, the uh, Stanget Zero, bring down the originals. So now I, I don't see the original as the masterpiece that I used to see. Huh, that's a shame. Well, yes. It's too bad. All right. Let's move we on. Get, <laughs> yep, we can get to Creepman now. Okay. With it finaled. My God. I was All so right. I was so uh, overwhelmed. I overwhelmed. Overwhelmed, right. is, overwhelmed might not be the right word. Uh, <laughs> I was a little lost, maybe. After, all right, lost, all right. I think it's pretty straightforward, actually. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? Go ahead and explain the whole thing to me. All right, it, it's actually, it actually more straightforward than I thought it is. Uh, I, I, I expect more of a kind of backstory, with which we haven't got anything. Yeah, that's I, one of, like maybe my main disappointment with the whole series. That's right. I, I, I would love to see Alexis, you know, motivation of of you know keep keep using the uh keep using on the Cantu's monster which we haven't got into that as well either. What else? I I would love to see more of you know even like uh Yukta, uh real, uh, real person, real body. We haven't got into that either. It it just like it just a standard fight between the good man and the bad man. Not really, right? That because the the fight ends midway through the episode, I think. Yep. All right. And then there's plenty so, of so, other weird and, stuff. So so does <laughs> yeah. mean what what happened afterwards? Uh, yeah, uh, if, can... that's the part that's gonna if all if right. any part of if like the episode causes uh, questions for people or like um, problems interpreting it, it's if any part does that, it's gonna be the second half. All right. So so let me try to to tell what happened because I I it it basically just I can never re, uh return to the to the real world. So leaving everything behind because um our characters which is uh which are Rika, Usumi and Yuta, they know that they are the creation of Akane's world. So they can't leave that world. So, right. uh, Akane, now that she, she know that that world is, isn't perfect, that she, she is a pathetic person. She wants to face the real life now, so she turn back to the real life. And I think that the life, the life action in the end, that uh, that's a girl waking up in, in a life action mode, is that is Akane. Yeah, I think so too. Although there's a case to be made that it's Rika. Hopefully it's not Rika, but... Um, but you you can see the uh the the present that uh Rika uh gives to the pocket and the uh, uh the the thing that uh Rika gave to yeah you're talking Akane about the the, the train pass holder yeah the train pass holders yeah that's 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 the one right but On the, the thing the thing is that the the reason that you might be able to argue that it's Rika is because uh Rika's is exactly like that. The, Remember, the Rika, Rika gave uh, the train pass holder, the Akane, uh, oh, yeah. an identical one. So they would have the All same right. one, and they would still be connected. So you could argue that it's that the, the girl in the live-action segment at the very end is Rika. Plus, she kind of looks like Rika. She has the same hair color and everything. Hmm. But I, I do think that it's Akane. All right. I do think it's Akane, but I, I can check on that again. <laughs> But I, I actually, I actually, I, I, I like the uh, the last like five seven minute of the show. I, I think I like I enjoyed that the most out of the these episodes. Yeah, I wasn't really into the all the, the combat at the, at the beginning. Yeah, it just oh, felt man. like a like a worse version of Gurren Lagann. Uh, oh yeah, <laughs> like all the all the dialogue about um, humans having potential. And that's yeah. why Gridman is, you know, able to triumph or, or whatever. All right. Uh, that's just I, that's st- straight from Gurren Lagann when they talk about, like, uh, spiral power and evolutionary potential. It's the same kind of deal. 
All right. And I actually got to laugh. I actually laughed a lot when there, there was a lie like that. Um, oh, you have that kind of power. What what power uh, is this? What? The healing the healing beam? No no no. It's not it's not the healing. It's the they 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 said another word. It's not healing. The um. Reverting beam. Yeah yeah, but there is some kind of you know to heal to heal Akane, memories, heart or, or whatever it is. Right. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Alexis is like you had that kind of power. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, you had that kind of power. <laughs> He's uh. <laughs> Uh, that's that's the uh, that's the what am I trying to say? It's like the bread and butter of um, the sort of bad robot versus good robot tokusatsu yep. type yep, of stuff. Yep, yep. Like the the good guy busts out a hidden power, and it you know the bad guy isn't prepared for it, and he he loses. Yeah, and and it's like it's some kind of power that we have never know before. That's a new <laughs> power. So oh my God, I just. Well, he he comes to some realization, right? That his pa- he he says mine isn't the power only to fight and destroy. I can also uh, heal oh, or like fix. M- oh, it was mending. fixing, like fixer mending. beam, right? Mending beam. Mending. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. and and he he realized a new power, which is the power of morality. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, that, that, oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah, I, I because I just t- turned turned up the episode to to see what. The, the word they use the behold power the of power mor- of morality yeah to to destroy the immoral Im- immorality oh my god <laughs> that, yeah well i mean uh classic good triumphing over evil just because <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to go i suppose that's yes that's right <laughs> on on the one hand the all the all the fights you know the big uh showdown with alexis felt kind of um typical and by the numbers for that reason Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. That it it was just you know the the good guy busting out uh, his I his did. hidden weapon like coming to an epiphany and and realizing oh you know I ha- I had this power all along and defeating him but on the other hand like uh, the whole thing with Auntie rescuing yep. Akane from being inside the kaiju yep. and then immediately getting stabbed by Alexis. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect any of that. In fact, it was like so anticlimactic that I could hardly believe what I was watching. It just there was like I felt nothing, no impact whatsoever. Because he he, she gets turned into a kaiju at the start of the episode. Like what mm-hmm. three four minutes later, he saves her, and then Im- immediately he's like stabbed in the back and cast yep. aside. Like I, it was just all flying at me so fast. Yeah. Well, I agree, and I think that the big fight, the big battle that, that we see, is more like a homage to 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 on the genre to the uh to, to kusatsu genre. So I so that I think the reason why is is go over the top, and it have like on the cheesy lies. So all the what? But, but but I I, sorry. All the what? It had all the what? On the, on the cheesy. Oh, know, cheesy dialogue. lines. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, but but I, I think it it serves it serves its purpose. I I I do agree with you that the the whole IT um affair is pre- is really you know like abrupt. It's it it's go too quickly. It's go in and out too quickly. That we 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 not sure what we supposed to take from it. I think I think the main reason is being there is that uh they have the last conversation together between Akane and Anti. Um, and I don't even remember what yeah, that me conversation neither. is. <laughs> did they did they talk? I yeah they ask, so 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 like so he he pull he pull Akane up right and and he talked something uh she talked something about like you are the fail you are truly the fail creation, and she said like and he said like yeah but um I will make by you, I will create it by you. Okay, and then, and he, then got he gets stabbed in the back. <laughs> yep, and then. And then he, he she become a kaiju again. <laughs> uh, no, he he just absorbs her right and and transforms. Yeah. That's that's the thing. Like into the new into the new kaiju, right? Or is that like a whole different kind of monster? It's Alexis. Alexis just takes on another form by absorbing Akane and feeding off of her negative emotions. All right, all uh, right. But that's whatever. <laughs> 
that's that's the thing. Like the whole the whole scene with Akane becoming a kaiju, it starts and ends so quickly that it feels like they were just checking a box. Like I'm I I want to say I haven't seen the original series at all, but I want to mm. say that something similar happened in the original series. Yeah, uh, and yep. so they, you know, they wanted to reference it. Yep. Uh, but it it wasn't necessary for this episode, I don't think, for Akane to become a kaiju. It would have it it like didn't uh impact the the development of the of the episode in any meaningful way it, it wouldn't have changed the conclusion i don't think so they could have skipped no. that bit and just gone straight to alexis absorbing her after she refused to make any more kaiju for him and that i think yeah. that would have been more appropriate like so you're not doing my bidding anymore okay well then i'm just gonna take i'm gonna take everything else that you have yeah yeah well yep i i think it does make sense it it make more sense that way. I agree with you. Now that I think about that, uh, but I I mean I do I do feel as though they're probably paying homage, like you said, yeah, uh, to to some particular plot point or or moment from a previous episode in the live action version. Right. A lot of people online are saying that this uh, that SSSS Great Man is actually functioning kind of as a sequel to the original Tokusatsu series. Is it? Oh, right. Well, the, I have no way of knowing whether that's accurate or not, and I haven't found any like super comprehensive breakdown of how how exactly it could be viewed that way. But hmm. people who seem to know what they're talking about, who are like super nerds, just briefly uh-huh. from going through uh, internet threads, I've I've seen some stuff yeah. like that. And honestly, it would it would make sense because there are some bits uh, of Gridman that, that aren't totally explained. Yep. Yep. All right, but I actually I, I I really like what happened afterwards. I I I really like the five uh, the five minute of you know of just Rika and Akane sitting in the room together. Right. And and yeah, they like they like action in the end. I do, I I actually it's it caught me very off off good of that. Oh, of course, <laughs> I wasn't yeah. expecting that at all. Well, I yeah, I, I didn't expecting you know like all the all the live action happened in the end. But kinda, yeah, well, kind of makes sense because End of Evangelion did the same thing. Is it? All right. Yeah, man, I didn't and know that. and all the the black and white shots in the middle of the the episode as well. Do you remember those? Like that montage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's Ava. Oh my god! I I all right. So it's I I think it's it's like another homage to the uh, Eva se- series. Yeah. I need to watch the show soon, man. I it's... I thought those are original, and I thought that was really cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I I guess it's cool. I I always like seeing uh, Ava stuff, you know, stuff that's yep. clearly inspired by it, or um, or is drawing a parallel to it, or is just ripping it off. I yep. Because then I can point to it and be like, "That's from Evangelion. That's from Evangelion." <laughs> <laughs> All right, so 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 you can become a super nerd. That's that well, a- Ava to me that's like entry level anime. Like you you have to watch it. All right, I haven't watched it. <laughs> I will, I will, I will. Gotta uh, gotta is, do it. Man. Is that is that episode twenty five and thirty six of Eva Trillion? Is that the alternate finale? So like they they got like the movies which, which basically have a different ending. The the rebuilds the newer films you can yeah 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 you can safely mm-hmm. disregard those. What's All important right. is, is the it? original TV series, the first twenty six episodes, and then End of Evangelion, which is a retelling uh, of episodes twenty five and twenty six, but with a totally retelling. with totally different uh, visuals story. They're they're oh, meant to complement one another. It's it's hard to explain, and I don't want to get into detail. Right, uh, I, I you, just... sh- you should go in as blind as possible. All right, because I I just know for one thing that the uh the movies the end of age age alien is really divisive. Yeah. To say the least. Oh yeah. People <laughs> love it. People hate it. There's no middle ground. Yeah, I definitely love it. All right. It's wild. Oh, okay. So, was it a dream? Was Gridman a dream? Gridman is a is a dream. Oh well. It's, it's it's not really a dream. It's it's like Akane, um, having some trouble in real life. We don't know about that, actually. 
Yeah. Um, so reverse, she, she created that that world. So it's it's not basically a dream because like ev- everyone can pat- participate in that. So that's why the Greek man can come in. So it's more like the uh, the alternative universe, in which Akane is a god. Right. Does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. I I kind of I pretty much feel the same way. Like the the mm. the reason that she is a god is because she's she's dreaming and she controls the dream. That was yep. my that was my interpretation. Uh, when I first watched it, but then I hopped online, and people were like, "No, no, it's not a dream." Yeah, it's more, it's more like the out. Yes, yeah, so, like I say, it's more like the alternative timeline universe that she created. Right, and because she created that, that doesn't mean that she she's the god. Um, well, the thing the thing is that the, these people online whose uh, opinions, I suppose, I was reading. Uh, we're yeah. saying that she, like, she didn't create that world. That world already existed. It's the computer world, all right. uh, which was apparently that... established in the original Tokusatsu series. All right. So, and she was so... able to cross over into it somehow. Yep. And she had to uh, to use the ka- the kaiju in order to uh, create it again, to you know, like demolish and reset. Right. The yeah. reason, the, it's, the it's reason Alexis, for that, it's Alexis that yep. gave her the ability to. That's right. To move yep. into the computer world. That's right. Uh, and and gave her the power to influence it on that scale, because because mm-hmm. uh, Alexis is from the hyper the hyper dimension, which is yep. where Gridman is from, which they reference when they're about to leave. All right. Uh, so like apparently knowing about the like the nature of the different the different universes and worlds. And of the yeah. overarching conflict from the from the live action series, gives you mm. a much clearer picture of like what was going on with the live action ending. That's mm. the that's the sense that I got from reading people's comments on the internet. Yep, yep. So I but I I don't think that it's like really wrong necessarily to say that it was a dream because in in some sense it was like she was in some sense it was she was transported to another world and uh, she had almost total control over it and she wakes right. up at the end you know yep the the, the only different thing that uh um the, the only different uh between she's on the dream and she have in the uh alternative timelines is that uh great man can come into the pictures so like the ladders uh great man can come into but in the dream great man cannot so i think that that's the only different there there is I see. Yeah. So it, it it is that's kind of your argument for it being like another world, like the computer world or virtual world, is because Gridman yep. is able to access it that way. That's right. That that's that's what I that's what I think. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That's a pretty that's a pretty succinct and like logical explanation in in favor of one interpretation rather than another. Mm-hmm. Did you catch all the little details in her room? No, I didn't. Did you like all pause right. pause the pause it and and look around? No, I, I, I haven't actually. I, I, I just pause it when it comes to her real face. Okay. Right. So it right. looks like if she Akane or, or or even Rika. Yeah. I uh, All right, so I'm doing that now. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> but you're going, the, the thumbnail going of this video, like the image of this video is gonna be a a paused image of her room with like a bunch of arrows oh, pointing to right. stuff. Because uh, it, I see the I see one of the poster. For Pramare? For, yeah, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, Trigger loves it. Trigger loves doing that that kind of stuff. So does Pixar. That kind of reminded me of Pixar, yeah. the way they insert references to their previous movies. I, I actually the the girl here. She look she look exactly like Rika. Yeah, that's at first when I first saw her, I I thought it was Rika, but then I looked around the room, and I I put together that it was probably Akane. In fact, one interpretation that I saw online was that. It's Akane uh, Yeah, yeah. That Akane, that R- the R- Rika in in the computer world or in the dream, yep. whatever you prefer, is yep. actually like the version of herself. Yep. Uh, that she she wants to accept because she she's struggling with like loneliness and despair and self hatred. So Rika, the Rika who she creates, I suppose in the in the computer world, mm-hmm. um, is the version of herself that she's trying to like embrace 
that which, makes which, sense as well. Which is why the ending between them is like vaguely uh, romantic. Like you could yep. you could view it that way if you viewed it through a certain lens. Because I I remember on the uh, oh, one of the episodes we see before the uh, the beach episodes, the episode where they go to the seas. Mm-hmm. Um, there there is some moment where um I can impress, um Rika. That I, I, I feel I, I I do feel like they are you know like the same persons. Huh. The way they they embrace. So Interesting. If, I if, wonder if you said that when we podcasted about that episode, because that would be like a major unintentional prediction. Yeah, we we definitely di- didn't say that on our first <laughs> note because yeah. we just started like a few weeks ago. Oh. But uh <laughs> Uh did we not cover the beach episode? No, we haven't. Oh, like, 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 I think we, yep. I think we cover it in uh, episode eight or nine, and the pitch episode is like way earlier. Are you Are you sure? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I. I think. I think. I. I actually touch up that when we uh, start doing the uh, the podcast. I, I. I did say some of that stuff. I think. Huh. But yeah, I, I thought that we had we had started around episode five or so. But yeah. You know what? I'm probably wrong because I remember making a thumbnail for it like a month ago or something. So, yeah, so I, yeah. Uh, so so yeah. If, if if we come to that theory, it doesn't make sense as well. That that I I I think that's the the reason why it's not the whole uh cast of Yukta, Usumi, and Arika saying goodbye to um Akane, but it's only Rika and Akane in that context. Right. It makes more sense that way. Yeah. Uh, yeah. What else? And I, I, I think that that actually one of the reason why uh, Akane House is like just next to Rika House, because maybe in real life it doesn't exist. Wait. Say that again. All right. So I, I think that's that is one of the reason why Akane House is just next to Rika House. Because maybe in real life the Akane house isn't doesn't exist. Why would why would the arrangement of houses in the computer world have any bearing on like why would that be related at all to the real world? Yeah. Alright, so alright, so so it's it's not about the real world, but it's about how, how Rika created Akane's characters. In, you mean how in, Akane in that... created Rika's character? Alright, so right. if, if we go to the theory that uh, Rika I can it, it actually Rika, the um the god version of Rika. Hold on. No, no. All right. It's that. What? No, Ak- Akane is the girl in the live action thing. All right. I I think. So All right. It, so so it, Akane it, is not would... a version of Rika. Rika is a version of Akane. Does that All make right. sense? All right. Because I, I I was thinking like Rika is the it is the real version. Yeah, yeah, I, I think that makes sense as well. Rika is the real version. Yeah. Well, who do you who do you think was was the girl who woke up in the live action ending? All right. So for now, because I think she 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 exactly like Rika. I think it's Rika. But oh, uh, okay. I think you are right. You changed but your mind. I, all right. I think you are right. But she looked like Rika, but she is actually Akane. Right. Is that and- make sense now? Yeah, um, I, I think she's actually Akane, and I. It's probably not a coincidence that she looks like Rika because they had to do casting for that part, you know. So they probably wanted someone who looks like Rika because Akane, uh, wanting to kind of, I, I don't know, I don't know what phrase to use, but like get better. Yeah. Uh, maybe the the reason that Rika looks so much like her her real self is because she wanted to, she was. That's essentially her reaching out to herself, like. Uh, All right, that's, and that's that's, that's why she would thing. make her look so much like her. I don't know. If Rika doesn't exist in real life, what is the deal between Rika and Yukta? Like before Yukta going am- amnesia. Remember, they have like a promise or something. Uh, yeah, I actually have a note about that here. I, I wrote that wrote that down. What we never we never figure out what the deal is between them. No, nope. there's a there's a nope. lot of things that are not sufficiently explained in this yeah. series and i hate that because uh I, I i think that this show does a very good job at you know like hinting on these little details that we actually try to pick it up and then the, it it doesn't address those details at all 
they just lie. They they randomly put it there. Well, they they might Plat, be in the background or there. something. Like if, on a second Maybe. watch, you might you might pick up some of that stuff. Maybe, but uh, yeah. Well, maybe what, whatever. So, yeah. I, I mean, I had the same frustration. I feel like uh, Akane, all all the pain that she's carrying, we don't we don't know much about it. Like obviously, her her trip into the computer world was was fueled by uh, whatever negative emotion she was she was experiencing yep. that Alexis wanted to feed on and uh, create kaiju with and such. Uh, but we don't know the the nature exactly the cause of of those yep. emotions and we we don't know uh I, we don't we don't totally get what the deal is with auntie and him becoming grid knight and stuff and yeah well i i, I think i i think the uh the uh, the staff the creator they 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 think that it's not the point you know like to right. in order to do all these things but I, I, I do feel like I want a confirmation of some of this stuff. Yeah. I know I know what you mean. I, I feel like they... I mean, especially because they were likely paying homage to the Tokusatsu series uh, at every possible mm. moment. Yep, like, yep. They, they probably viewed a lot of this stuff as complete, where people who haven't seen the the original, or, they, they might not feel that way. Or they might see it, like you said, as unimportant. Like it's yeah. it's not the not the point. The point is, um, Akane's kind of trip, her journey through these yeah. twelve episodes in order to sort of come to terms with herself. That's uh, right. And also Gridman fighting monsters and and stuff. Hmm. All right. So in in the end, how you feel about Gridman as a whole in general? Um. I don't know. I like that it's different. I would say that's that's the first thing that pops into my head, and that's probably how I will remember this this series, you know, like a, a year or two from now, if I do remember it, is that it was mm. it was a unique experience watching it because there was an element of like surreality. I don't know if that's a word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, surrealism, whatever. You yeah. you weren't totally sure as you were watching what it was that you were watching. Right. Um, right. And I I think that's that's nice. You know, I I think the show use that to its advantage i was pretty pretty disappointed with some elements of the last few episodes <clears throat> mm-hmm. um but i i don't regret watching it yep How i about you? i like the i like the vicious style of of creep man actually i think it's like it's happened one of the best visual storytelling of the entire year and would you say you like the visuals more or the direction more? Because the the, the, vi- the direction of the visuals, so more of the uh, uh, of the c- uh, cinematography, if it's the world. Yeah. <laughs> well, it actually had the they had the actual c- c- uh, cinematography. Yeah, at the did. end of <laughs> with the camera <laughs> the and everything. <laughs> that's that's right. So yeah, I I I love that. I I I I think that it have like a motif. It have like the, the visual have many motifs and some of the shot that it it can speak to the whole thing you know like you can look at it and you see you can see like the whole the whole um chemistry the whole message that that it's trying to convey so right. so i i really i really love the um the visual of the um uh, uh the direction of Greek man um I, some of the stuff about the homage, I especially to the uh, tun, tunkasasu, is that the word? Tokusatsu. And, uh, yeah, and to the um to the Eva, so <laughs> I I I didn't you know like get it at all because I haven't watched any of those, but I appreciate the the love the love that they 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 have for all these on this show from all the classic shows. And, and and I can see the the love that they have. Um, f- f- I I I was a bit let down on the uh, on the finale as, w- as well on the last two or three episodes. But it it was because uh, it was because the uh, episode nine is like so so good. Right, and which was a dream episode, and then Akane yep. wakes up from a quote unquote dream at mm-hmm. the end, or Rika, who knows? I. Yep. We don't so, want to. We don't want to be too conclusive here because we just watched it like a few hours ago. That's right, and I, I I like I like the tone that it it trying to say. So I like the orbital, 
that it is trying to, to to tell us to suggest us that you know everything you watch is not real is can can be real or not you know so we and and I, I like on this on the little detail that is it it plant it tried to plant I, I I love I I just love the style of the shows the actual you know the the actual way that they they try to um, to close is it's not that good gotcha so not not uh, not totally a fan of the of the ending neither was I mm, yeah although but, but t- still, talking about yeah, but, it kind of makes me appreciate it a little more right be- it, it, this is the show that you know it 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 will be benefit more the more that we talk about it the more that we try into uh the sex what what is going on well some sometimes that makes things worse when you realize sometimes there's like no worse. substance and no sense to to what you're watching but that's i don't right. i don't really think that's the case here i just think there are some omissions mm-hmm. and they're they're likely intentional um in the story that's right. And so that's it's hard to feel satisfied with that when you're kind of like a pleb. You know, you, you haven't seen what uh, what it is I, you're maybe supposed to have seen to totally appreciate it. But yeah, you know, I, I, okay. I don't really think that we need to to know the original live action show in order to appreciate this. And I don't really think that it's the it's the staff intention to, you know, like to get to to make us know about all these things. So I hope hopefully that that is not the case that we need to watch more of the original action show in order to appreciate this. Uh, I think to appreciate it like to the fullest, it, it might be important. To the fullest, yeah, that's right. To to well, understand every reference, to um, totally grasp the the tone and the you know everything that the that the show is pushing towards, it it might be important to. I've seen the live action, but there, there's certainly plenty that you can get out of it without. Yep. I wouldn't have watched 12 episodes of it if that wasn't the case. All right. So uh, can I ask you a question that um, you think this is like a, um, a, a, a trick or so, a typical trick or so? Do I think it's a typical trigger show? Um, yep. No, I don't, I don't think it's typical. Um, I do think that it has a lot of, well, I don't know a lot. I don't know if I'd say a lot, but it does have some Gurren Lagann influence, um, mm-hmm. specifically in the in the action heavy cuts, like in the combat and in the the concept of good versus evil, and yeah. of like uh, hum- human potential or, or whatever else, like kind of mm-hmm. using your passion in order to overcome. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Obstacles or mm-hmm. adversity. I think a little yeah. bit of that is is Gurren Lagann esque, and Gurren Lagann was made by a lot of the same guy next people who moved to Trigger. Yep. But no, I wouldn't say that this has a lot to do with uh, like Little Witch Academia, for example. Yeah, I because I have this conversation to a lot of people, and many of them regarding this one as the typical Trigger show. You know, it Trigger, and I was like, not not necessary because. I, I, I think it's this is more of the anti trigger. For me though I, I for me though the the typical trigger show is Darling in the Franks. Oh it, it's not it's not that that's a cloverwork either. show. Yeah, that's a clover work because Clover uh, Cloverwork took over the, the show in I think in the second half. Yeah, that's from what I understand um, that's the case, yeah. But they were heavily yeah. involved from the from the very start. All right, so, I, so I don't really care too much what like who made Darling of the Franks. I'm just glad yeah. that it exists for the last six episodes. <laughs> All right, it's um, so it's like an antidepressant. You just watch so, that, and you can't help but laugh and feel happy. Oh my god! Oh my god! You are so <laughs> you are so bad. <laughs> why? It's, it's why are you really laughing funny? at the show? You know, just why you laughing at all the effort that people you know put in. Hey. What what effort? <laughs> I like I don't I don't care the, about their effort. Who the cares? right thing that they have to think about their the on the plot development. You know, I don't know how much they thought about it. The relationship between Zero Two and Hero. You know they. <laughs> oh my god, the ending. It was great. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, I don't I don't think of this as being particularly similar to Darling in the Franks. 
or it, many so other things that Trigger has done. Yeah, it's its own so thing. It's, yeah, that's right. That's right. So expect this show gonna be in my top ten. Oh my! Oh, gasp! Okay, I'm not gonna tell you I, uh, my <laughs> opinion of it. I guess I'll leave it a yep. secret because our plan right now is to do our top ten of the year uh, next, next week. week. Oh my god, next week. Right. Yes. So to the listener, we we're gonna do the top ten of the year next week. So, uh, to name. Yep. All right. Let's get to the other show now because we actually just spent half an hour to talk about Greek man. And we didn't even talk about the fact that Auntie's eye turns blue, or the marble that Utsumi is holding at oh, the end, yeah. or any of that stuff. <laughs> well, when I say any of that stuff, I really mostly mean those two things. All right. I don't but, care about about anti blue eye don't. It means he became so, half human or something. Probably. Huh. Because all like Akane has blue eyes. Oh no no, I'm sorry. Utsumi has blue eyes, um yep. Yuta has blue eyes, and what's her face? Rika. 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 They all have blue eyes, so I think blue is meant to represent humanity there. Oh. And I don't know what the all deal right. is with the marble. Alright. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of your ten favorite shows, uh, and you don't care. I I have a thing. I have a talk about that. Yeah, so we I, we do need to move on. That's true. I have absolutely no idea about that. All right. We, I know we uh, saw the marble in a previous episode. I just can't remember the context. It? Yeah, definitely. I just can't remember. Huh. All right. We can talk about it later. Yeah. So now let's move on to our uh, flower evils. Sure. Volume. F- Five. Mm-hmm. All right. So yeah, is sh- uh, shit just got real? Yeah, I was literally about to say, <laughs> to say shit just got real. Uh, yes, it did. There was. All... How do you think about this these volumes? Uh, I I mean I liked them. Yep. I I like the escalation. I'm just I'm amazed that we're not even halfway done. All right, so you will be disappointed then, but uh, I will spare you that. Okay. When the time comes. Yeah, no no spoilers. Yep. Uh, yep, so I, I, I really love the only escalation. So it's it come from a, a school. It's come from a room in the school. It, it just come from the the actual, you know, like stealing the, uh, the clothes. To like the the messy, the they did the mess in the room, come to the school, the whole school, and now they they planted to, you know, like invite the uh the the summer festival. Right. Oh, you're so you're kind of talking about like how far things have come. Yeah, how far things has come. Right. Oh, I, I'm talking about a lot of things as well, but yeah, one of them is how far things has come now. Because it's it just started with like a moment of what would you say like indiscretion when he yep. when he stole a girl's gym uniform and then mm-hmm. now they're they're planning on like i don't know i don't know what they're planning exactly but i i have to imagine that it's going to involve like theft and property damage and arson arson right well we've already got arson that's chapter 26 wow. took care of that that's right well <laughs> all right and and our three main characters had you know, have had come into like a serious shit right now. Yep. I I actually surprised like the first time I read it how far that um Saki devote herself into. Because it's it basically has nothing to do with her. But basically like on this even like Saki or Kasuga. It has nothing to do with Kasuga either. But they um they put themselves into on these or oh, on the problems. Um, what do you mean it has nothing to do with them? All right, it had nothing to do with Saiki. It it this is the plan between uh, Kasuga and Nakamura. What so, what has so nothing like, to do with her? You mean what they're planning to do with the at the festival? Saiki, I I mean like all on on this on this stuff that um Kasuga and Nakamura planning. Psyche just very well could uh could just walk away from it. Doesn't doesn't think about it, doesn't get involved to it, but she does. Well I don't I don't know if I would agree with the phrasing that she could just walk away. Because she's like she's deeply troubled. 
it's yeah. clear from her actions. So I don't know if she's like really capable of kind of assessing the situation the way her friend Aichan does. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, and being like, let's go to the police, let's go to the police, which they should do. Um, and I mean, the that moment when I when I just says like, you're, you know, you you don't really like him. He's just the first guy who ever confessed his love to you. You're just in love with the idea of being in love. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I mean, I think she's probably right on the money. Yep. But uh, Psyche can't, she can't understand that because apparently she's got some terrible, uh, I, I don't know. She's got some sort of weird mental, th- like the, See, our, our lack of knowledge about what's driving her is actually kind of similar to our, our lack of, it? what? Well, I, I, I think she have like an, uh, it's, it's, it's not really, but she have some shot of an inferior, inferior complex. For so Sakamura? She, she no, no, to herself. So, so she, she just, she, it, 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 it's like a self of, uh, it's, it's a lack of self confidence in herself. So, so, so it, it just, it just feel like she, she always feel like that she, she acting, at a shell. She, she have like her, um, like everything expected to her. So she, she done right. well on that. But she, she think herself at you know like having. Having a, a a shell, not not like her real life, her, not like her real personality. So like the the one person who actually acknowledged that, but I'm I'm, I'm doubt that because I I don't think Kasuga actually acknowledge acknowledge her real personality at all. It's just like her image of that. Right. Yeah. He definitely doesn't uh think of her. he he definitely doesn't see the real her, as she yep. puts it, because he like you know. He built her H- up as some um, undefilable, Goodness. yeah, undefilable, like, in, inhuman person. Yep, yep, uh, yep. And he, he's still, I well, I don't know. You could argue that he still sees her that way, or still saw her that way before the events of Chapter 26. All right. Because when she you originally <laughs> presents herself to him, he's, like, unwilling to to do it. It breaks. Yep. Uh. You want to get into the uh, the event of chapter twenty six? Well, I don't know. We should probably start at the beginning, right? All right. So we start at the beginning. So what is the beginning? Oh, so that uh, Kasuga and Nakamura play some more prank. Yeah, the, the putting school. the underwear on on the statue. Yeah, and I I, I thought I just, that was pretty I, tame compared to the stuff they've done in the past. That didn't seem like a big deal to me. Oh uh, yeah, well, but I actually love the visual how how the uh, the manga. How the how on the panels, they they lead up to that. Oh no no so 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 like you see when Saiki saw saw that, she actually look look at Nakamura and 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 Kasuga, and and you see that uh, Kasuga is smiling. Yeah. So that's all conveys through visual as well. So that's the visual storytelling here. And that that is like absolutely no dialogue whatsoever, and I I love how the show showed that, how the manga showed that to us. Right, right, right. I uh, I kind of breeze through that chapter to be honest, um, oh, right. just because they've done some way freakier stuff than just putting yep. a pair of uh, pants on. Yeah, some but they head. they're planning so much more. Right. right oh, right. So, and then we get into like. Uh, Nakamura and Kasuga like spending nights together in order to prepare for the uh, f- uh, to wreck the summer festival. And at one point though, that the the two actually like you know. I can like, hear that you have the book in front of you right now. That's right. So I just <laughs> flipping up the book right now. So at, at one point, Nakamura actually got drunk, and they are like in. You know, like close physical contact. Right. There was a lot of attention paid to like this her silhouette, uh, like the outline of her body underneath her her clothes, in that mm-hmm. scene, mm-hmm. Uh, which I think made sense because that's probably where Kasuga was looking. Yep. Uh, all, and it, all, although, like even even though she's willing to be in in such close contact with him, uh, he, I don't know, maybe he views her kind of the same way that he did. With uh, uh, psyche. psyche, yeah. I don't. I uh, yeah. I I I 
I'm not really sure either. Like I, I think this the event that we see right now between him and Nakamura, like like the the one that she got drunk and she 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 slip, is more <laughs> like. Actually, yes, she passed yeah, out. Yeah, I know, but when you said she sleep, that just reminded me of, like, an internet thing. <laughs> it didn't yeah. have anything to do with Flowers of Evil. <laughs> All right. Uh, it, it's, it's more it's more to to suggest how the uh, ambiguity between uh, Kasuga and Nakamura relationship to each other. Because Kasuga doesn't know what she is to him. Like right. or, or what point. he is what he is to her that's right that's right how she how she thinks of him mm-hmm. yeah well i mean it would it's i don't i don't blame the guy for being kind of clueless about that because it's not as though she is putting out a whole she, bunch of signals and see I, I i don't even think that she have a clue about that you know what that she has see, a crush on him now nah, see 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 the guy of you know who just go with the float so like what whatever amuse her she do she does that I yeah you you've expressed that in the past you think that she's yeah, that right. kind of person but I I don't know I think she might be a little bit more of a, a manipulator than that. Oh yes, yeah, she manipulated all right. <laughs> she's she's got uh, Kasugo like around her little finger. Think about when she was like uh, kind of he was out of her good graces, and she was like yep. you're gonna have to do a whole bunch of like really messed up stuff in order to to. Uh, earn my trust again or, or whatever i can't remember yep. oh in order to yep. reform the contract or yep whatever language she used mm-hmm. yeah so she he's he's like doing her bidding essentially right and at the same time we got uh psyche and and her friend i like uh coughing off with the uh with all the events so they they went to the uh the <laughs> The the right the the shed again. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought of a I thought of a good term for it hideout. All right, a hideout. All right, yep. So so she 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 also they went to the hideout and they actually know what what these two up to. Well, I I I don't know I don't know about that. It might be hard to say that they know what they're up to because when they walk into the hideout, it's just like underwear strung up and a whole bunch of weird paintings and stuff. Well, but in later on, though, when when they come, they, he he actually have a book, uh, a plan book written right now. So she actually just read everything, and she know what's basically they they they're gonna do something in for the uh, in the some summer festival. Oh, uh, were was that bit translated, in your version? That bit was translated in my version. Like yes. all the all the details about their plan and stuff when the yep, yep, yep. when there were yeah, that, panels. Okay, see, I didn't have that. I did. I didn't have this translation, so I missed out on a pretty significant bit right. of knowledge there. Uh, but but I, it, yeah, it was clear that they like some of their plans may have been transcribed there. I don't know. All right, because uh, from 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 the book that I read, like on on the plan book. On every page, they have like the detailed plan that what they're gonna do and like oh, wow. how 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 many days left. So like, see, even pick up that you know that they, they have been together for every day now, every night. Huh. Okay. Mm. So that's that would provide her with motivation, I suppose, for her to confront um, Kasuga yep. the way she does, knowing that they've uh, been together for like several nights. That's right. So that's. I think that's right for up or uh, even even like um her conversation with eyes as well that uh I just said let's see uh she wanted to be loved and she jealous with uh Nakamura, Nakamura that make her want to do that right with Kasuga and now we get into the the fucker point now which is that is a rape scene actually yes Man, she ripped the boy. <laughs> yep. I don't know how how I feel about that, man. You don't how you don't know how you feel about it. Uh, I mean, you should probably feel terrible about it. Well, because it is I, terrible. It is terrible. It is terrible. Well, it's terrible but, but, for both for both of them. All right, because it is all right. I, I, I'm not thinking about the uh, the rape term because when when whenever you think about rape, it's more like. Be, about a boy into the girl yeah i like think that's boy into boy i think that's probably it, true most of the it's time it's not the other way around most but, of the time yeah 
but uh, I mean, it it still happens this way in this story, and it's it's horrible yep. that she is so twisted, like twisted up. Um, yep. That she that she feels like this is the right course of action, and it's terrible for uh, Kasugo that the that the girl that he used to love is and and no longer does. Yeah. Um, is you know is doing is doing this to him. Right. So it's it's terrible for both of them. Like I really pity both of them in that scene. Yep. Well, I I think that's the uh, that basically the point that that the story is gonna make. So they they go into the path of destruction. They got they will go into destruct themselves. Yeah, I suppose. Um, I mean, I I don't know what what like what the way forward is for. I mean, psyche can Ruined. probably, <laughs> psyche can probably get counseling or or something. I I don't know. Well, but she I, she she actually go into some she she has trouble right now because she not only she raped the boy that she loved, she also you know like put the uh the the high out on fire. Yeah, so she's an arsonist and a rapist. Oh my god! At the same time. Yeah, at the same time. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's and... it's it's terrible, but I mean, I you have to imagine that Kasuga will keep her secret the same way that she kept his. All right, she she doesn't keep his keep the secret now, so she she actually come to confront Nakamura while she was pleading out. Well, she, what? What do you, you mean she you doesn't? Did... Yeah, I I caught that she was bleeding. Yeah, but what do you yeah. mean she doesn't keep his secret? She keeps right, a secret. No, no. She hasn't told everybody that he was the. No, no, no. She she doesn't keep this secret note. I I mean, like, oh, she this actually, secret, right? Yeah, she she come out to Nakamura in order to pranking about that. Yeah, she does. Uh, that was and, that was really terrible. What happens in chapter twenty seven when, when she like in in the course of trying to make Nakamura the Nakamura jealous, she's like, I just I want to be. Why can't I be you? Yep. Yep. That's that's awful. All right, I, I hope I Psyche actually... disappears from the story and and gets some some help. Oh my god! <laughs> All right, I actually understand what she been thinking up to the point of you know like ripping the ball, ripping the boy. The conversation afterwards though is very confusing to me. Like even even I read the I read that for many times now. I don't exactly know what what been happening. Like what been going on in their mind. So like uh Psyche trying to grind uh Nakamura up by you know like by basically what it was a you uh I'm looking for by um Well she says like you're not needed anymore, essentially. Yeah. That uh that Kasuga doesn't he doesn't need Nakamura anymore because there's no such thing as the other side. Yes, uh, that's right. And, so she's trying to and... make her feel like She's trying to devalue Nakamura, essentially. And what that Nakamura did is that just hug her. Yeah, she hugs her. Until, until like Psyche just. I I don't know, man. <laughs> well, she she hugs her, and that's that's a question that I have is like how much of that is meant to torment Psyche? Is she? Because when like if you're really angry at somebody and then they're being kind to you or they're showing you pity or compassion or what whatever mm -hmm. um that's only going to make you angrier because yep. you you don't want to forgive that person or to feel positively towards that person instead you you want them to be as hateable as possible to justify the things that you're feeling yep, yep. so when but i i can imagine that nakamura may have may have given her that hug like may have embraced her in order to torment psyche Right. Uh, but on the other hand, there it, there's potential, I suppose, for her for that to be like compassionate, because she maybe she understands like that psyche feels totally totally worthless. Mm -hmm. Um, so there that may be like a real hug. I, I don't know. I kind of doubt it, but well, yeah, yeah I, she, I, I don't know about that either. Like Nakamura, it, it, it's, it's a real question mark for me because like, her action just doesn't really make sense to me. Well, yeah, she's she's got some sort of weird mental disorder yep. or something. 
but uh yeah i, I think I, guess. I, I don't know <laughs> i have to give this volume for psyche because he actually you know like come into a, com- a complete uh yada ray now yeah yeah randy ray is it uh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I oh, she, 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 she doesn't kill the the man she loves but she close to well match. i I don't know. I don't. I don't really. When it comes to this story, I don't really want to apply terms like Sundere and Yandere and, and stuff like that yep, because yep, yep. those are those are just like you know tropes for and, lonely and Japanese natural. teens, <laughs> and uh, that's that's not really what we're what we're dealing with here. This yep. this story is trying to like dive into the the heart of darkness. That's right. Um, hmm. But I. I I don't like um I, I don't know. All right. I don't I don't know so, if it's 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 yep. certainly gotten dark. Uh yep. but I I just I think I said this about the last volume as well. I don't know how we how we go forward now. Right. Uh I have to imagine that eventually they will run away from the town. That's my right. guess. Mm-hmm. Um like they'll their obsession with the other side um yep. will will eventually lead them to like go somewhere else like physically seek out another place to live and they things may even escalate to the point where they really can't stay in town anymore for mm-hmm. fear of their safety or because like literally no one will accept them or whatever mm-hmm. all right how do you like the story so far it's good uh right. i certainly like the last couple volumes more than i did the earlier the earlier ones yep mm-hmm well, because the earliest one we we have already watched the anime. Well, yeah, I'm sure that that is a contributing factor. Um, yeah. But and 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 yeah. I do think like the uh, the stake got higher now. Like they they go they go and go more dark now. So yeah, it just it it's high hitting for now. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's I guess so. I mean, it's literally hard hitting, uh, and that Sakuta slap or Psyche slaps Nakamura, mm-hmm. uh, and then she gets a hug as her reward. Yeah, it, it's I, interesting I, that she like very quickly uh, confesses to Nakamura that she just wants to be her after she receives that yep. act of like kindness? Question mark. Right, and I I, I love the way that um, Psyche have have her thing up, you know, like, whenever they, people uh, tell stuff to her, she, she have, like, her mask, so she just behave like normal, she, she smile be, before she doing the action. So, like, before she slap Nakamura, she did that as well. Yeah, so, she does that in the hardware store, too, when she catches Kasuga buying all the, the materials for their plan. That's, that's right, that's right. She won't even, when he says, you already know that it was me, right? She won't yep. even like uh, acknowledge that. She's she says, "What are you talking about? I gotta go to cram school." Bye. Yep, that's right. I I I just love that way about this girl. You know, like she she doesn't want to express her real f- f- emotions. So so like we 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 see we see her real emotion not by her face but by like her shaking up or you know like what what her behavior afterwards. So that 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 speak right to her. You know, like her whole life, her personality. She always do that. Do that. Right. Yeah, it makes sense because she's so concerned with the real her and how Kasuga the image, is able yeah. to see the the real her and nobody else can. Mm-hmm. Uh, so she, I'm I'm sure that's a very pressing concern for her that she's acted a certain way her whole life, but that's not who she really is or how she really feels. But I, mm-hmm. I kind of feel, and this was something I was starting to say earlier, I kind of feel like we're lacking some knowledge about Psyche in the same way we were lacking knowledge about Akane and Gridman. Uh, All right. I mean, yeah, it's it's got to suck to have these expectations placed on you by your family and your friends and your classmates, your mm-hmm. teachers, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. That, would be, that would be really stifling and, like, unpleasant to have to, to live that way. But we all, all we really know about her about that part of her past is like she had to take piano lessons and etiquette classes and she's a straight a student and stuff like mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i don't i don't know i just i don't feel i certainly feel the impact of her having like hit a breaking point for sure but yep. we we don't know everything about what brought her to that point 
I, 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 well, I, I can see your point. Actually, if I feel a more, I'm more invested to a psyche character more than you, I think. Because um, she's one of my favorite character of the of the whole manga. But I, I do agree that, um, yeah, if, if they're fleshing her out more about her backstory, about her family, her background, all this guy, we can we can be more related to her. Or maybe that not the point that, you know, we have to relate it to any of these characters. Well, I mean, I, I part of the argument that the story is making or that the, the author is making, I'm sure, is that this this potential for uh, violence and and sickness and hatred, it it likely exists in everyone in mm -hmm. some measure. And it's just been yep. brought it's been brought out of psyche by the circumstances of her life, especially over the past few months. Yeah. Um, so but, I I understand that, but she is like really acting uh, extreme, you know. And well, yeah. See, she makes some decision that uh, I think that will affect her for the rest of her life. Now, she yeah. actually lose her virginity to 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 the guy. Well, I I don't know how much that's going to impact her for the rest of her life. It'll, <laughs> it'll certainly impact her a lot in the short term, but. I mean, may, maybe it maybe it will. Uh, having such a terrible uh, sexual experience be your first, yeah. that might have lifelong consequences. Whew. All right. And the same for Kasuga, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. since like he's come to terms with his his feelings for Nakamura, which I don't think we've we haven't talked about. And oh, he says yeah, he says the one I love is Nakamura. Yeah. See, he actually confessed that to Saki now. Right, which which is prob probably the impetus for her confronting Nakamura in chapter twenty seven. Like she couldn't deal with the fact that Kasuga said that, so she burned yeah. down his his hideout and try to hurt the the girl that yeah. he loves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, it does work. It backfire on her. <laughs> yeah. Huh. Right. I I definitely like her a lot more after this volume. Oh, like like. <laughs> Like, hey, I like her character a lot more after this volume. See, like all these characters are becoming very hateable right now. So <laughs> I, I think Light is a very amusing world. Yeah, I suppose you're right. <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy watching her character. Enjoy watching. Oh my god! Hey, <laughs> all right, come on, come on now. <laughs> all right. Yep. All right. So, um, we we're not gonna. I'll cover the next volume next week, right? So we're gonna do that on the on the next um on the new year. Yeah, yeah. So next next year. In a couple of weeks, yep. All right. I I want to talk more about this uh this manga, but we run out of time now. So let's talk about the last show up to date, which is the episode six and seven of um Giant Chandra. Trouble. So it's come to an end. Yeah, and what an end it was. Yeah, and what what an end it was. The I, just I, the artistry on display the entire time. Mm -hmm. Is it even possible for anime to be made like this anymore? I mean, I know that's such uh, a cliche thing to say, but could <laughs> could this OVA even be made under any circumstances in twenty eighteen? I honestly don't think so. I actually have that same thought when I see some of the action sequence here. In uh, episode six and seven, I think more in episode seven, that you know that the more than anime I just can't do it anymore. Yeah, it's it it the animation is great, the uh, productions wise. Yeah, and in episode six, I actually feel that uh, that's that's a come off as as a relatable characters. Uh, Not in sure episode about six. Episode six. What I about actually, episode? Go ahead. All right. I'm uh, not sure about the uh, the be the first half of the episode seven when he just basically just stand sitting around, right? Doing nothing. <laughs> well, you he's know, not. Just, he's not doing nothing. He's contemplating he, his father's final words. He thinking. Yeah. Yeah. But I I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. Um. And and I feel like the act afterward is is a bit um by the book predictable but uh 
what was predictable three. about the end of episode seven? Uh, of his character, that shit was egg. crazy. No, no, oh. of his character egg. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, well, he. Yeah, I guess I agree. He comes to the realization that he has to fight. Yeah, even even though he don't know the reason why, he he still doesn't know the reason why. He doesn't know it the reason to why be what. This way. It had to be this way. Like uh, he. I, th- I think the main point that he, he doesn't want to fight anymore is because he wants to save Ginre. Right. Ginre is on board the the anti Shizuma sphere. Yep. Or whatever. And he doesn't wanna and, he doesn't wanna hurt her. And and and, and he, he still come off with that question, you know, like he, he he doesn't have an answer for that question, but he still fight. I think that's what he, he took in the end. I think maybe he came to the real because his father asks him, you know, you pointed this out uh last week that it's a, a big turning point or not a turning point but it's a it's kind of a a theme on which the show turns um that his father asks him right before he dies is it possible to achieve happiness without sacrifice so Mm -hmm. i think during that scene in episode seven when he was uh you know he was refusing to fight and all the guys from the ipo or the (laughs) one guy specifically i honestly don't remember names so i'm not gonna say names but that's right he (laughs) (laughs) can you blame me (laughs) there's like so many (laughs) characters uh he he's he's forced to contemplate his father's last words like is it is is it really possible because he he wants not to sacrifice anything or anyone yep uh but i think he reaches the conclusion that it's not mm-hmm. it's it's not possible to to achieve happiness or maybe peace or um with time you know, to sacrifice. Yeah, like sacrifices have to be made in order to avert conflict and ensure safety, peace, happiness, whatever whatever you want to call it. I think that's mm-hmm. probably the conclusion that he reaches. Um mm-hmm. but we're we're not given I guess what's the word I'm looking for? We're not we're not allowed to hear his thoughts on it, I suppose. We're not we're not given access to his thoughts. Yep. Which I think All is right. okay. So yep. yeah, what what about episode six made made him feel like more of a relatable character to you? Um, let 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 me think about the the event back to the episode six, but uh, I I don't I don't really remember why I I, I feel relatable to him, but I, I I do feel that in episode six. What what was the event of episode six? Well, let me ask you specifically: How do you feel about the conversations that he had with Murasame, the immortal detective guy? All right. So yeah, he, uh, the boy, the boy hit hit the guy for being just you know a self sacrifice. Right, he doesn't value. Again. He doesn't value yeah. life, and he's like too cold and rational. That's how Daisaku that's right. feels. That's about right. Him. That's right. Yeah, yeah. But but then but then like in episode seven, he learned that you know like he, being emoto is like the pain itself. Did you just say being emoto? What? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, say say that f- again. <laughs> being immortal. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, being immortal is a is is a pain itself. So like, I'm it, not sure what you mean by immortal. Uh, I I'm talking about the French guy, the 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 Paris the uh the uh Paris detective, because he he oh immortal. immortal. Oh, Imoto, gotcha. Yeah. I was hearing Imoto like the term for little sister. <laughs> right. Being Imoto is 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 painful itself. <laughs> Poor <All right>. Kaide. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. Being, so so you two were thinking about King Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's 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 true. Yeah, he he does after a time at the very end of episode six, I suppose, or is it episode seven mm. when he realizes it's episode seven, when he realizes it's what, seven. what hell, yep. uh, Murasame had to go through in order to free Ginre or in order to put yep. her into stasis like that. Right. Uh, well, right. But he, he can't totally understand Murasame in episode six, which is, which may be, I don't like, I, I don't want to, uh, assume why you feel a certain way, but it, it may that may be the reason you felt more connected to his character was because he was really struggling with uh, Murasami's worldview. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. that uh, you have to take what whatever actions are necessary in order to defeat evil or to ensure ensure peace. 
Like you, you can't afford to be idealistic. That's essentially what yeah, Verso is trying right, yeah. to convey to him. And Daisaku was like not having it. He because he wants everything to be all right without, you know, without conflict or confrontation, mm -hmm. or without sacrifice. And um, we we, all right. In another note, we have like all these, uh, we we see like all the uh, BF um top five, the top ten actually. Yeah, yeah. I the focus on Big Fire in these last two episodes was I actually really liked it. Uh, oh, surprisingly. Oh, yeah, my God! Like many of them have like yeah that thing. It's 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 really good. Like all these people with all these special powers, and the the good thing is like they don't show they don't actually they don't actually introduce all these special power to us. Like, you know, like, on the Shonen show, they, they have the habit of, you know, like, telling what his special ability is and all, all, all this guide. But here, it, it, it showed that to us. Yeah, it like, just comes that out right in the, the battle. And all these special abilities are pretty awesome. Yeah, they are. All of them. They're, the like, abilities are cool. They look cool in action because the show yeah. looks looks good in general when it, as it moves. Uh, the characters all have really like interesting designs. That's uh, right. That's right. Their their personalities are all like you know they're all villainous and sinister and they kind of have an edge to them. The voice acting mm. is really great because they all yeah. have like they all have distinctive yet yet deep uh, voices. You get the sense that any one of them could be the the head villain in yep in yeah, an that's anime right, series. That's right. uh -huh, uh -huh. It's uh, and they they all in addition. They're all concerned about the way the plan is unfolding, even though they're being introduced to the story at this late stage. Uh, yep. They, their, their goal, or maybe not their goal, but like their motivation and their, um, just how how they feel about the events of the series so far, and their their concern for how things are developing, is mm -hmm. is like immediate, and you you get the you you get a sense of like who they are and what they're about right away. Yep. Uh, they're just and... like, they're just awesome. <laughs> I love they're them. awesome. They're awesome. Yeah, and and we actually see the big fire himself, which is uh, actually he he looks very young, right? And it's and it turns out it's not even big fire. It's not very big fire. But then we and, see and... big fire at the very end. Like, yep. Oh my god! I'm so mad that the sequel never happened. It never happened. I I, I think there is uh there is some of the series that come out later yeah it well it doesn't have to, to have to do with the uh, sequel of this one um there there was a series there was like a 40th anniversary giant robo thing in 20 in 2007 yep. but it wasn't yep. received very well however there is a sequel to this ova the day the earth stood still in manga uh, yeah. in manga form called the day <laughs> the day the earth burned it came out in 2006 uh, so i'm reading right. i'm definitely reading that all right uh so there, there is a sequel, but like you, you saw all the the stuff about the, like the fight continues or whatever, yep. at the yeah, end, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm so yeah. like, can you imagine how godlike a sequel to this would have been? Like what it, what a significant contribution it would have been to the history of anime for this not to be just a seven part thing, but like I don't know to, yeah. to take on life beyond this. It would have been crazy. You know, if it, it, it would take like ten or twenty more years in order to complete. Yeah. You know the story like like they wanted to, yeah, probably. Uh, but, yeah, but, but that, all this that... all the sequel teasing was really was really interesting. Uh, although right. obviously there's no payoff. It, even to to the uh, to Alberto, remember him? Yeah, Alberto. Yeah, the when he comes back. As, yeah, that as that crazy. is so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yep, but we we knew that he wasn't dead because his daughter, um, yeah. said that her her link with him hadn't been broken. Yep, but uh, but like, who could imagine that he would appear this way? You know, like he actually tried to, uh, just try to help the uh, uh, our exp expert of just statistic because right. he doesn't he he doesn't like uh, uh Gintre brothers. Right. And, yeah, and... it's it's a it's a grudge. That's that's the other thing. Like, obviously, Alberto is more of an established character, so, um the well what what i was about to say was that the the villains are given given a like real personality right yeah, yeah yeah but they, it's they have there's they no have comparison that's right there's no comparison between alberto and them uh yep. 
So I guess what I was about to say is kind of a moot point, but it's really cool how his his motivation becomes after a while, uh, like crushing Genya, just not letting yep. him dominate uh, Big Fire. And it would have been uh, even cooler if we got into the the sequel because then all the Big Fire stuff, like, damn, I'm just so yep. sad. <laughs> all right, so um, I I don't know if it's made on the manga, is it? Yeah, Giant Robo was originally a manga, and then I, it was I mean, a Tokusatsu I, series. No, I mean the uh, this this particular chapter that we that we watch. Oh, so is um, that the anime original? It that's a difficult question to answer. Uh, I'm not sure whether the overall story is from the manga. Because uh, I have I have the feeling that uh, Gindre and Kenya, the brothers and sisters, uh, they are made specifically for this. Oh, we are. That's what that was the impression that I got. Why is because that? They have like a, a, a complete act. They have like uh, they have not very little relation to the main point. Like like the the big fight is is accepting for for this particular story. So, uh yeah, I I see what you mean. Yeah. Um and wow, what an ending for Gintra! I I mean like it just. For for Gen, yeah, it's it's very predictable because we all we all see that coming last week, like two episodes before the the ending. But for Ginre, in order to come to her own sense, and in order to to be killed like that, you know, and even like the uh, the image that that they got, it's so striking. It it was so so good of her like trapped, um, kind of, of, of phasing her, like, halfway through the wall with all yeah. the Shizuma drives on it. And, and 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 like later when when her brother shot her and, and she just you know like dropped dead, right? That that was so striking and that was so so good. Yeah, it was. It's re- it's really interesting that uh, Daisaku and he he isn't actually the one who saves saves the Earth. It's actually Ginrei and Genya together, right? Who fulfill oh, right. who actually fulfill their father's dying wish. Uh, one mm-hmm. of them unwittingly, yep. perhaps even both, yep. because you can see that even though, uh, like, you know, the whole thing with Ginrei wanting to trust her father and and believe, kind of being given courage by Daisaku, and mm-hmm. his his like childish, uh, his childish uh, uh, faith in in his dad, she is kind yep. of buoyed by that and inspired by that, and so she she takes the she takes the drive to be inserted. She wants them all to be together because she trusts her father. But then you can see at the very end, like, she hesitates to give it to her brother because, of course, he's acting mad. He's acting crazy, you know. I, I think, I, um, I I believe that she has every reason to be hesitant because uh, his, her brother has, has gone mad at, right. at, the, at the point. Because, yeah. like, her, um, her objective and his objective might be the same, but they are from different... Um, I don't think they have the same objective. One of them wants to destroy the earth; the other one wants to save it. Well, their objective is to fulfill their final wish, so they have that same objective. Ah, but, I see. You know, like, yes, they they have different thinking of the outcomes. Right, right. Yeah, and it it is when you step back and and look at the like the events of of the last couple episodes. It is the two mm. of them together who who kind of save the world. Uh, fulfilling her, their father's wish, right, because yes. it's it's Ginrei right. who who gets the the Shizuma drive to her brother, and it's it's Genya mm-hmm. who who you know that, who installs that, it. That is exactly right. And I I, I for this uh, episode seven alone, I see some more you know like um motif of the eye. So I think the eye is really like the the central motif of the of the show. I I pick up like two particular um scenes where what are those? Uh, it symbolizes the eyes. So it, um one of them is um Daishaku actually come to the eye of the robot in order to uh control him of the giant. Oh robot. right, Remember right. That? He he puts himself in the eye hole. Yep. Yeah, the eye socket. Yeah. And the other one is I think at the beginning of uh episode six or uh, episode seven. Episode six, when uh, the uh, the big fight, the the remembering of the uh, of the of the uh, mag- magnificent ten, 
questioning about questioning Genya about his uh, real objective. Right. And, and we we have like him. Uh, we have like all these people like hang hang up in the poles, and right. and him like further further down. That reminded me they, of uh, Nadia's Secret of Blue Water. That is, it is, and 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 they come a uh, a very next shot of the uh, giant robot or something, that uh that will fitting to the eyes of, um, uh, I I I will show you the, the the shot so that you can understand what I mean. But it also the, it have allusion to the eyes. As well. Okay, I can't picture that. Are you are you talking about like maybe a fade between one character's eye and then Robo's eye in the next scene, something like that? Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm not surprised to hear that the that something like that was included. Um, although I did not, I didn't make the connection about um, Daisaku taking his place in in uh, in Robo's eye oh, in order in order yeah. to bust through the eye of the sphere. Mm. That's. Uh, I wonder what the significance of that is. I have no idea, but yeah, I, I think the eye <laughs> is, is, is really looks cool deep. as hell. All right, so that's the shot I was talking about. So as uh, you see, the eye of um Genya on that scene, yeah, were actually like um it, it morphed the uh, previous scenes of 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 his standing like on on that on the pole, and a- everyone in the magnificent ten is around him questioning him. Yeah. So, so it, it's right into the eyes of of Gindre, uh, of uh, Genya. Okay. I'll I'll have Just to so go back know. and watch that scene. I know exactly yep. what you're talking about. This is the start of episode six. I'll I'll go back and check it out. All right. Uh, yeah. I I don't know. Like the the themes of this, you're you're much better, I think, at picking up on like visual motifs uh, than I am, because I'm mm-hmm. typically when I watch something, I'm like looking more for story. Story. And, like thematic parallels um you you are you are better than that than me actually for looking all my thematic well, parallel and stuff for a while i wanted to be like a like a pop culture critic like television or film or music something like that so all right yep that's the kind of thing that's the kind of skill you would need for that i guess um but that's the for for this series like the the separation of childhood and innocence like where where exactly mm. one meets the other the yep. the circumstances under which that happens um <laughs> are you talking about um flower evil now no uh <laughs> all right i'm i mean i'm sure that flowers of evil dabbles in that a little bit as well although it's mm. it's pretty clear when you lose your innocence in flowers of evil it's uh, yep. as soon as you meet nakamura mm mm-hmm. <laughs> the the evil herself yeah uh, you have to form a contract with her right. yep <laughs> continue that's, that's the I think that's the big thing in Giant Robo is like the line between childhood and adolescence mm-hmm. um, and how people navigate that transition right. uh, because even even the question about like uh, is is happiness possible without sacrifice like can that is is that achievable uh, yep. without loss i think that sort of question is that like that's the sort of question that would plague a child they wouldn't be able to to answer that uh, because mm-hmm. they they they're innocent themselves um so in a in a sense i think daisaku became like he left childhood behind when he spurred himself into action yep uh yep. and took giant robo to confront the to confront genya in the sphere just a personal opinion, but I remember when um, uh, Daishaku was he- hesitant to um, to make a decision, and then there is a uh, a, a general who met at him about that. Yeah, he slaps him, and then it was it cuts was that line an, in the. It was an abuse. It was an abuse of power, you know. Oh, of course, it's it 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 was horrible. Yeah, and the other characters commented on it that way as well. Like how how you. You can't do this. He's still a child. Don't put yeah, this on that, him. Because the thing is, like, he just a told you it's so okay. He, he doesn't. He, he he doesn't know what to do, and he doesn't have, you know, like a maturity to actually let this make making this decision. So, like, if he can make the decision, he said that's good for him. But you don't force him to do something like that, you know. 
the thing is but, though that he is forced by his circumstances to do it yeah that's right he is forced by his, by his father no less yeah did you see the text at the very end this movie is dedicated to fathers and sons everywhere oh i, I didn't see that is it wow yeah that's the very last like the very very last moment after the credits after hmm. the thing with uh the leader of big fire coming out of uh like whatever cryogenic stasis he was in or you know yep. that that yep, yep, yep. little bed that he was in um after all of that it's this movie is dedicated to fathers and sons everywhere right. and i mean wow. we we get there's a there's like a terrible a terribly strained and complicated relationship between all three of the main characters and their fathers yep yeah all right so that that's a good that kid yeah and Gidre. yeah and T- tetsugu as well and uh, he's as well, he's yeah. listed as a main character on like uh, anime databases like the three main characters are listed as mm. being Daisaku, yeah. Ginrei and Tetsugu and he disappeared yeah. he disappeared for a while but he was a pretty significant part yeah. of the, the the series especially at the mm. beginning. Yep. Yeah, cool. the like the the sins of the sins of your family's past of your of your father specifically being carried through time and children having to deal with them. That's that's all that like all over this series for sure. Right. So how 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 would you rate this out? Uh really because good. Because I because <laughs> I th- I think you like it more than me. Um I, I I will say that I wasn't totally happy with episode 7. Uh I I was right. like yeah. blown back by the animation completely. Mm-hmm. But it was episode mm-hmm. 6 for me that that really like stunned me. Uh, oh, right. Like the last 10 or 15 minutes with yep. uh, the three members of Big Fire that we hadn't met yet at the very end, kind of attacking yep, yep. the uh, the IPO base. Yep. yep and yep. the just like Daisaku's fear of adulthood and, and Ginrei's teleportation, like her her deciding to do that as a as a result of her faith in in her father and her the inspiration that Daisaku had given her and like the score, just the epic, mm-hmm. like the opera in the background and yeah. her, the green light, like slowly enveloping everything. I was like, I had chills the, for like 10 minutes straight watching that. Mm-hmm. Um, episode seven did not leave me as high. Right. I do. I did enjoy it a lot though. I think three and four episodes, three and four were kind of weak. Yeah. Uh, but I, on the I whole, I think episode. like, I think that the series is like, just the supreme work of art, especially right. on the visual level. But I would say even mostly on the visual level. Yeah, for me though, the uh, the plot is kind of gen- the overall plot is kind of generic. Like that, that, that we we know the main event for sure is the uh, the the side characters that do the work because they are awesome in their own right. Um, the animation was pretty pretty supreme. But uh, I, I I feel I, I feel as though like watching it I have I, I still have some many moments that I have to bring myself to watch it. I don't I don't uh. know why, but yeah. In every in every single episode actually, so uh, for for enjoy enjoyment I would put that a bit less. But yeah, it it is still a very good series for me. I see. Um, okay, yeah, I I can understand that. I, I kind of felt that way a little bit at some points in like uh, the the two episodes that I mentioned three and four. Yeah, I was like I was waiting for the show to pull me back in with some like spectacular uh, moment of moment of animation or music yep. something like that. Uh, uh, Dais- Daisaku was not always my favorite character, and given that mm-hmm. a lot of the story kind of rested on his shoulders near the beginning, that was yep. that was a problem for me at times. But when yep. Gin when Ginrei and Genya kind of took over, uh, yep. and it became more and more clear uh, what what had happened, you know, like ten years ago uh, at yep. Bastarle, that mm-hmm. uh, I th- I think the show got a lot better for me. Yep, I think I think it just come it just come at me not as much at, at an action oriented, so that's why. I... Or even like I'm 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 not into that a big team story about big team but yeah but that's right uh in general i think giant Noble is 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 a pretty good show 
Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Uh Yeah, I would I would I would agree. I think with your with your uh, your comment that the themes of the show are really big. Mm. Uh, there's it, there's not a lot of like subtle character drama to it, although it is mm -hmm. it is plenty dramatic, obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. But it's it's not it's not a it's not a quiet series. Um, All right. If it's if you not, had to bring not totally one, subtle. <laughs> if you had to to think of one single moment that stick out on your mind of of the show, which one would you pick? The end of episode six. For which sure. Is... For me, that was the that was the peak. Uh, the big fire, uh, the three members of big fire, their assault on the IPOs, like final, the last headquarters in that underground yep. cavern thing. Yep. Uh, and, and, uh, just all, all of that, all of that yep. there, all the, the two forces clashing above ground and then the mm -hmm. conflict between big gold and giant robo, uh, in the yep. water underneath and, yep, yep, yep. uh, Murasame protecting Daisaku from the guy who, like cuts things when he snaps his fingers like him sacri so quote unquote cool. sacrificing himself like that and and Daisaku even even seeing Murasame's resolve to like give up his own life to protect him he still doesn't yep. agree with him on an ideological level instead yep. he's too focused on rescuing Ginrei and then Ginrei yep. makes essentially the ultimate sacrifice and yep. teleports herself out of there that whole sequence to me was like masterful right for me, it, it would be the uh, the sequence where um, Genya shot shot um, her his sisters. Right, and yeah, in episode seven at the end. Yep. Oh, did you? It's... Go ahead. Yep. All right, right. I, I I I just meant to say that it's striking for me. Yeah, it definitely is. But the, your your interpret well, not your interpretation, but maybe your appreciation for that scene might uh, might um, I don't know be changed or altered a little bit by. I, I know you didn't catch the thing at the end, like the card that said "Fathers and Sons Everywhere." But did you did you hear the conversation between uh, Ginrei and Genya at the very end after the credits? All right, I, <laughs> I haven't seen that either. Okay, do you right, still have so the file on your computer? I still, I, I still do. Okay, then I won't tell you uh, what it's about. But you can just go back and watch after the credits. Yep. There's there's a couple things there for you, and one of them has to do uh -huh. with Ginrei and Genya. All right. They're not alive or anything, you know. It's not like, <laughs> it's, it's not like uh, time has turned back or anything like that. But there is a little, yep. bi there's a little bit of both of their characters there. All right, I gotta watch that. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, no problem. All right. All right. I think that brings us to the end of this postcard. Even even though with less show, we have more to talk about in this week. Yeah. Well, um, two two of them concluded. That's what that's that that's the reason why yes, and yep. So to all those listener who have made your way to listen, spend your two hours, your precious two hours to listen to us. <laughs> why? Uh, Why'd you <laughs> do it? Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas for real. We we be here next week for the top ten anime of the year. Oh yeah. So be sure to tune in. Uh, we are, we already know what number one is, but there's there's plenty of uh, competition for the numbers two through ten. That's right, or even like honorable mention. Yeah, I we'll, always, we'll throw I some. Always, of those. I am about to say horror, horror mention, horrible, horrible mention. <laughs> yeah, uh, bunny girl sent by. Me too. <laughs> Hor horrible mention. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, more, more like Karakuri Circus, honestly. <laughs> All right. So we'll see you next week and enjoy your Christmas period. Uh, bye, Thank everybody. You. Bye.